Hi guys, it's Lauren Daisy. Welcome back to my channel. Firstly, there's some drilling going on where I live, so hopefully you can't hear that. Welcome to another Gossip Girl Day video. So today is day two, and today we're going to be talking all about Miss Jennifer Tallulah Humphrey. Hi, I'm Jennifer. <laughs> For this video, I'm going to be talking about how I feel that Gossip Girl failed Jenny. It's more in terms of where they took her character and her potential, kind of like along those lines, but it is not a Jenny Humphrey deep dive. I have a series of videos that I'm going to be doing on my channel where I'm going to be doing deep dives into characters from shows. Everyone's going to get their own individual video and I actually have a Serena Vanderwoodson deep dive coming up in Gossip Girl Week. So you're going to see that pretty soon. And in that video, you'll get more of a gist for the kind of layout that I'm going for. I'm going to be talking literally about pretty much everything that happens to them throughout each season, kind of a style analysis on their like fashion, makeup, hair, their relationships, their friendships. That's kind of where we go with that. It's going to be proper in depth. I'm expecting them to probably be over an hour long that kind of vibe. Whereas today we're going to be talking a bit more generally just about why I feel that Gossip Girl failed Jenny in general. But a Jenny Humphrey deep dive proper in depth will also be coming as well. So firstly we're going to go season by season just a little bit. I wanted to go in like chronological order with how things kind of happened to her rather than jumping from one to the other. So you get more of a kind of view of how her writing changed as the seasons went on. Obviously, we only get Jenny for four seasons out of the six. And even then, season four, she's only in like three, I think, episodes or four episodes. So it's really not very long. But I just personally feel like even though we didn't get her for that long, they could have done a lot more with her in the time that we did have. Kicking off season one, obviously in the pilot, she is attacked by Chuck. I think this is definitely one of the more prominent um, traumatic things that happens to Jenny in this show right in the first episode. Throughout the whole of season one, she is belittled by Blair, basically into thinking that she is not good enough to hang out with them to be part of their world because, you know, she's from Brooklyn and she doesn't have the same kind of money that they do. I think this kind of sets the foundation for why she does the things that she does towards the end of season one and also in season two. You know, in this season we see her, she wants to fit in with the minions so bad and kind of take advantage of Blair being knocked off from being Queen Bee. So she steals like the Valentino dress to try and sell it and then has to steal it back and things like that. What I liked about that was that obviously we saw her trying to stoop to these lows to fit in with the minions because that's what she's kind of been told by Blair and by them that she kind of has to do. She really has to fight for her place in this group and it pushes her to the point of theft and doing things that she wouldn't normally do. But what I liked about this is that it's not malicious it comes from a place of just desperately wanting to fit in and kind of being pushed to that point of being so desperate that she would do anything to fit in. And even once she's done it, she feels the guilt and you can tell that she feels badly about doing it. So there's a good kind of character arc, like the star of a good character arc there, I feel, in season one. We obviously get the horrible love interest of Archer, who is kind of just using Jenny. And I think that's a theme throughout the show is people just will use her. And she somehow always comes out the villain. Obviously she didn't go into that relationship with the best motives. Um, she wanted him because he was an Upper East Side boy and he, you know, was good for her kind of reputation. He turns out to be this really horrible guy. Once again, Jenny is, you know, embarrassed and the minions kind of disown her once again. In season one, she is also shamed by both of her parents for wanting to be a part of this Upper East Side world. And we have two different kinds of like points of view there. So with Rufus, firstly, he grounds her. He, I think, was really brutal with the stealing of the dress. Okay, the stealing of the dress was bad, but she also kind of was stealing it back. <laughs> Not that that like makes it like fine, but you know, she's at least trying to rectify that problem. But you know, he really scolds her. And I think 
in that that scene is really emotional when she's trying to explain to him why she did what she did and you know she says you send me to this school i have to try and get along with these girls and we just don't have the kind of money that they do and she sold her sewing machine she sold all this stuff and i think rufus takes this really harsh approach of like oh you know well i won't apologize for not being able to buy you all these things or something like that i can't remember exactly what he says you don't have to do those things jenny you're making a choice what don't you get do you want me to choose to have no friends i feel like when i watch it now um i can't actually remember what i said about this scene in my ultimate gossip girl video but when i watch it now i think he definitely should have tried better to sympathize with jenny obviously what she did was wrong but she knows what she did was wrong those kinds of pressures when you're a teenager you have to remember that in the first season jenny's only 14 well she turns 15 in this episode actually because it's like her birthday party she's only 15 and when you're 15 everything is huge everything is huge throughout what well, we call it here secondary school but like high school you do you want to fit in you want people to like you and it is brutal it is brutal in there and i think jenny actually shows a really kind of as accurate as it can be obviously in this high society life that is like very out of reach for like the general viewer that's watching but i think she does show a kind of good representation of what it feels like to be 15 years old and to want to fit in with your friends and like rufus knew how much she loved fashion and knew how much she loved these things so for him to see that she had sold her sewing machine which was like her one of her most you know prized possessions her biggest loves to try and fit in i think should have been more of a conversation of like whoa this is really serious rather than just what you did was bad i'm not going to apologize for not being able to give you all these things and then on the other side of that you have allison who tries to force jenny to not be part of that world she she bumps into lily while they're shopping and that becomes a whole thing because she hates lily but she takes it out on jenny when lily is just trying to be nice to jenny the whole art gallery thing i totally get that her mum wanted her to be at that art gallery opening for her i get that that is absolutely fine but it was cotillion <laughs> it was cotillion that is a, such a huge moment in the show we have three cotillions in the show and each time you see how much of a big deal it is to the characters that attend and th what it means in this more high society world, which Jenny is entering because that's where her friend, or friends, that's where her friends are, you know, obviously Eric, that's where her brother now is because he's dating Serena Vanderwas. So he, you know, was going. I think really harsh of her to scold her and try and ground her and shame her for wanting to go to this and for ultimately going. Alison was so judgy about it. And I think, it wasn't about Jenny. I think it was about the fact that she didn't like Lily, she didn't like that world, and she wasn't a part of it. So in season one, overall, I personally think these were suitable storylines for Jenny. I have no issues with these storylines. I think, you know, aside from the Chuck one, I think the Chuck one was unnecessary. When I watch shows, I kind of tend to take the pilot with a little pinch of salt. Um, because I think in the pilot, you know, they haven't been picked up yet. Everyone look like even just from the pilot to the very next episode with anything, friends, pretty little liars, you know, gossip girl, everyone looks a little bit different because a lot of time passes and you are just starting out with these characters. And in the first episode, Blair and Chuck are very much antagonists, big villain vibes. And almost immediately once we get into the rest of the season, that is rectified. And well, Chuck, <laughs> not so much, but they immediately kind of try and soften his character by bringing in this friendship with Nate and that he actually does have, you know, a romantic side to him because he starts to fall for Blay, you know, these kind of things. Whereas I think in that first episode, they really tried to establish him as a villain with what he does to Jenny and what he does to Serena. As much as that scene is awful, I don't think it was meant to reflect the whole rest of the season, the whole rest of the show so i feel like you could just take it out i don't think it's a big part of jenny's character i don't think it really needed to happen to her i think it was more to kind of push forward a narrative for chuck's character than it was for jenny's i think it being jenny in that scene doesn't really add anything to her character i think they just chose her because we knew her because she was dan's sister creates a rivalry between dan and chuck and also serena 
and Chuck because she already knew that Chuck was bad news. But then once that episode passes, Serena doesn't have that kind of view of Chuck anymore. You know, everyone thinks he's smarmy, everyone thinks he's a bit slimy, but they've been best friends for years and they always show up for each other and they are a close-knit friend group past the first episode. Whereas if you just watch the first episode alone and then, like, I don't know, an episode from any other season or even just the second episode, it's kind of already a bit of a switch into, oh, no, these people are actually friends, but you wouldn't think that watching the first episode. I feel like I've gone on a bit of a tangent. I don't really know where that was going. But basically, the gist is, I don't think the scene with Jenny in the pilot was necessary, but I also don't think it really contributes anything to her character either because aside from once in season three I think it is when Chuck apologizes to Jenny for it and then also when Rufus brings it up in like series five I think or four never really talked about again whereas I think if you're going to include such an intense moment it would be something that would come up later on something that maybe Jenny would struggle with or you could have a kind of roundabout moment where maybe she helps somebody else deal with something like that or you know talk to someone about it or has more of a heartfelt conversation with someone but it just kind of gets brushed under the rug I think because it is involved in that first episode aside from that I think the other storylines are actually good for her character they build her character up they display her first as this really sweet naive girl and then we kind of start to see how the Upper East Side is bringing her over to the dark side but that kind of Humphrey Roots Brooklyn life still keeps her kind of grounded, which I think was a really interesting dynamic. Things like being so naive about the Archer situation, you know, these are things that she can learn from, um, being pushed to the point of stealing, the things she can come back from, the things she can learn from, the things that build her character. And I think we start to lose that as the seasons go on. In season two, we've got two really big storylines for Jenny. Firstly, her kind of fashion dreams and aspirations. Secondly, we have her relationship with Nate. Firstly, we'll talk about her relationship with Nate just briefly. I'll be more in depth about them and everything that happens with them in my Jenny deep dive. But I think for Jenny, I liked Nate. I thought their relationship was good. I was invested in it. I really like it. Even when I watch it now, I think it's one of the better pairings of the show but I hate that that gets ruined she has this sweet friendship with Nate and this little bond and then it gets ruined by them the whole dress thing and he then kind of immediately changes his mind about her which I think was kind of harsh I think it seemed like a weird 180 I think they just kind of they use Jenny as a bit of a roadblock in the Vanessa Nate relationship um whereas I think that relationship between Jenny and Nate had more potential personally than the Vanessa and Nate one. And in turn, it also damages her relationship with Vanessa, which is, I think, a really sweet part of season one. And I think their bond is just a really sweet one to see. It's the only really sister relationship-ish, you know, kind of thing we get on the show. And their friendship always just seemed so nice because it always seemed so genuine. Serena and uh, Blair are obviously the big friendship of the show, but I think Jenny and Vanessa were always the more kind of healthy one. They genuinely loved each other, wanted to help each other out. Things like that didn't come between them until this whole storyline with Nate. One of my favorite things about Jenny was always her fashion storyline. She honestly, when I was when I watched Gossip Girl for the first time as a kid, she made me want to be a fashion designer because I just thought she was so cool. I just absolutely loved her. I thought she was great. And um, I thought that was so cool that she was like 15 and she was just kind of chasing her dreams and she would design all these cool clothes and, you know, she had this determination and I just loved it. I thought it was great. It was something that no one else on the show was doing at the time. Blair, Serena, um, Vanessa kind of had a filmmaking thing, which was cool. Everyone else was kind of wrapped up in more of the school drama or college and things like that. And if that's not your path in life, you don't really have anyone to identify with so much in those kind of earlier seasons. So that was why I love Jenny, because I never really had the intention of doing uni. I wasn't sure. And to see Jenny just have her passion and have her thing she wanted to do and just absolutely go for it, I thought was great. But they destroy that storyline as quick as it comes around, it goes away again. And I think that storyline becomes less about Jenny's drive and determination and becomes more about her feud with Rufus, leading to her wanting to be emancipated. Season two also introduced us to Agnes. 
Agnes is horrendous. She's such a good villain, but the stuff that she puts Jenny through is actually horrendous. And no one, I feel like, ever talks about her. No one mentions her, like, aside from Jenny. I think Rufus mentions, like, oh, she's staying at Agnes's house, but no one ever calls her out. No one ever seems to know the awful stuff that she puts Jenny through in the whole time that she's in the show. I think Agnes was a good villain for Jenny. I think she was kind of a good um sparring partner for her i think their scenes together are really powerful i think agnes truly feels like somebody well aside from some of the things she does <laughs> later down the line but in this particular storyline with the fashion show she seems like someone you could genuinely meet the things that they kind of butt heads over i think is really good i think those storylines are great but the stress of jenny she wants to do this and it's her dream and she's able to do it professionally and she's able to do it in a way that buyers want to meet with her and all this stuff and Agnes is sabotaging it and trying to take it over. Um, and she's not putting her all into it in the same way that Jenny is. There are lots of partnerships that have that kind of push and pull. So I thought that was really good. Season two definitely tests her relationship with Rufus to the absolute max. And I think to the point that it almost honestly gets taxing. <laughs> It gets like hard to watch sometimes. And I think that's on Rufus's part, personally. I think Jenny definitely is the rebellious teen. She um, acts out and she does things that are reckless and she doesn't think them through, but she's 15. But if you saw that your child had that level of potential, she's obviously so good at what she does. To not let her try to do that I think is a real shame. And even Jenny calls him out on it and is like, you did what you wanted to do when you were a kid and pursue your music and everything. And he just kind of takes the approach of like, well, I don't want you to do that. I want you to do what I want you to do. Even when I watch it back now, I think that Rufus is really harsh. I actually, for once, like, you know, Lily's <laughs> approach, um, which I don't say often about Lily's parenting, but I think her approach in this situation was good. I think Rufus just takes it so far to the extreme in a way that he doesn't do with Dan. Then we have Serena's terrible 60th birthday party, okay? I never understand this when I watch it back because Jenny comes out the villain of this. And I'm like, how? Actually, how? Because Serena throws this birthday party for Jenny knowing full well that she doesn't want it. Jenny said on multiple occasions she said i just want just the family she's like i just want eric dan rufus like serena you're fine to come lily i just want that i want it low-key i want dad's chili i want to play board games she has been through one hell of a year at this point because this is more towards the end of season two so she has been through almost having her dream and having it taken away. The whole thing with Nate and the minions like hate her as well and are bullying her at school. Like she was literally just like, I just want a chill birthday. And Serena uses it to her advantage. She throws that party to make herself look better to Poppy and to prove that she's not irrelevant and, you know, she can still roll with the socialites. It is all selfish. It's all for her own gain. And... Then Jenny sabotages it by putting it on Gossip Girl, which is completely a thing a 15-year-old would do. And something that other people have done multiple times. <laughs> like, put stuff on Gossip Girl to get back at people. All these teens show up and whatever. And Rufus and Lily come home. And again, scold Je you know, they scold Serena for it first, as they should. And then Serena, she's like, this is not my mess. And like, leaves. And it's like... Yes, it is. This is not my mess. It sounds to me like what Serena put together was <clears throat> delightful. At least last year, it was my face on the cake. And the people at my party might have hated me, but at least they knew who I was. Lily says to Jenny, she's like, you know, what, this looks lovely. And it's like, okay, maybe it does for somebody else. But it was not what she wanted. And she tries to explain to them, at least last year, when the whole dress... <laughs> thing went down that the people that were at her party they may have hated her but they knew who she was and that this thing nobody knew who she was they were none of her friends they were all people that serena had invited it was just a huge ego boost for serena and then she just wipes her hands of it and walks away to leave jenny to kind of take the fall for ruining it which yeah obviously she invited those people she shouldn't have done that but why did she invite those people 
because Serena went against what she wanted and did something for purely her own gain. But Jenny still comes out the bad guy. Again, I think these storylines are okay for Jenny. I think they're good with, you know, potential and with maybe different kind of directions that they could have taken them in. To be honest with you, this whole video is probably quite biased because I'm absolutely in love with Taylor Momsen. I love that woman hardcore. Um, I love the Pretty Reckless. They are so good live. If you don't listen to the Pretty Reckless, you should listen to the Pretty Reckless. They are incredible. Um, and I love her and I think her acting is great, you know. So maybe I cut Jenny a bit of slack because she's played by Taylor Momsen. I'll put that out there now. I genuinely think that Taylor Momsen's acting is some of the best on this show. Easy. That scene where Agnes burns her dresses and she's like screaming at her and crying. Agnes, please, these dresses are everything in my entire future. <gasps> you are out of your mind. That is honestly some of the best acting that is on this show. Easy. And yeah, I feel like with the Rufus story, they just took it too far. And also they portray it in a light of he's the one that's in the right. And Jenny is the one that needs to just give it up and come back home and stop rebelling and stop pushing Rufus too far. When in reality, I think it's kind of the other way around, or if not, at least it's equal parts of looking at the situation and just mishandling it on both of their parts. But it seems like they portray it as though Rufus is a loving dad and he's the one that is in the right and she should go to school and she should do all this stuff. And Jenny's the one that kind of has these big dreams and doesn't know what she's doing. Whereas I don't feel that to be the case. I think the emancipation storyline is really good. Um, the idea that Jenny wants this, but Rufus won't sign it. So then she's like, how can I go about it? And that whole dilemma. And ultimately she comes to the realization that she doesn't want to not be his daughter. And that's a really sweet moment when she does come back home but I kind of wish they had handled it differently in a way that the resolution isn't that she kind of just caves and ends up having to give up on her kind of fashion dreams and Rufus's way wins. I would have preferred if Rufus would have let her pursue those things because ultimately that was what was stopping them from seeing eye to eye was he was just so no and just shut her down all turns and even though he could clearly see that she had the talent and the drive and the dedication for it. After this, we don't really see that much of Jenny's kind of fashion dreams again until she's gone and we hear about them, you know, from time to time from other characters or, you know, she'll make a one-off dress or whatever, um, which I think is a real shame because that was one of my absolute favorite things about her character and I think one of the best story arcs that she was kind of going on. Back to Nate, I think that Nate was a really good match for her. It was nice to see her in kind of a romantic storyline. I don't think Jenny particularly needs it. Um, obviously she's the youngest, but also I think her character is strong enough on its own without relationship drama. Um, she obviously has, you know, the fashion thing, her war with Blair and the minions and that whole toy between, do I want to be the queen of the Upper East Side or do I want to, you know, just be a good person and just kind of try and do better than, you know, the queens before me. So those storylines, I think, are really strong and her friendship with Eric, um, things like that were really strong without any love interest. I don't think the show is like worse off for not having Jenny and Nate together, but I do think they were a good pairing. Um, I think I would have rather they just didn't have them together at all rather than give me like, give me the, the, the little bit of them together for me to like cling on to and be like, oh my God, they would actually be really good together because their scenes were really sweet and he seemed to really understand her in a way that nobody else kind of did at that time. Rufus disapproved, Dan also disapproved and I just thought it was really sweet and I really liked them together and I thought his whole... 180 on her seemed really harsh I don't know I think they had really good chemistry that just kind of went unexplored and it felt like they just threw Jenny under the bus in order to get Vanessa and Nate back together which I didn't really appreciate Vanessa steals the letter from Jenny which was so shady that was so fucking shady can we just talk about the letter stealing for a second because I oh my god that scene boils my blood every time that letter was so sweet from Nate, you know, saying how he wanted to be with her and stuff. Also, it's a little bit ridiculous because he writes the letter, which is sweet and all, but also like, 
could have just called her or texted her. He's all like, you know, I haven't heard from her in weeks. And it's like, yeah, because you just wrote her a letter and nothing else. And she's not even living at home. Like you could have done a little bit more recon, sir. Vanessa steals the letter, which honestly I think is one of the shadiest things that happens on this show, but it's very downplayed. Jenny comes out the villain again. Sabotages Vanessa with the dress, which wasn't nice, but she did try to stop it. She, in that moment, was angry. And you know what? Rightly so. <laughs> she was a teenager and she was like, maybe in love's a bit too strong, but has this huge crush on this guy that likes her back. And then her, someone who's supposed to be her best friend, goes behind her back and starts seeing him and doesn't tell her, knowing how she felt about him. And I think her having a bit of petty revenge was quite frankly, absolutely fine. And still she feels bad about it. She tries to stop it and she apologizes and everything. And then Nate is just very like, oh, I'm glad you didn't get my letter. Like, you're not the person I thought you were. Like, all this stuff. And it's like, bruh. Like, yeah, she is. What do you mean? I don't know if it was just because she went after Vanessa specifically. But when Jenny was doing shady shit before, Nate didn't bat an eyelid. Well, I will give you this. It's not good anyway. But now that it was against Vanessa, he was suddenly like, oh, you know, I don't know you. And he chooses Vanessa. It was all just very weird and I don't think just fit their characters at all. They paint it as like, well, at least Vanessa apologized and she was gonna, you know, she just broke things off with me. Like she's the better, per the bigger person in this situation when she was the one that started this whole thing anyway. It's like with the Serena party thing. Other people start shit with Jenny and then they get all annoyed when she stands up for herself and like fights back against them. And then somehow she still ends up the bad guy in the end. So not only did they kind of squash the potential that I think Nate and Jenny had, but they also then damaged her friendship with Vanessa, which like I said, I think is one of the better parts of the first few seasons and also one of the better friendship pairings that we get to see. So then we have season three, which I think is truly where Jenny's character gets failed just the absolute most. We're starting to see it trickle in in season two, but in season three, they fully just said, fuck any character development that Jenny Humphrey had, any friendship that she had, any relationship that she had, absolutely everything goes out the window in this season. So we have her being pressured by Damien to have sex. Um, I think, I talked about this a lot in my Ultimate Gossip Girl video, but I think it's really sad the way that the show kind of portrays the pressures that people feel to have to engage in stuff like that when they aren't ready or they just don't want to, but they feel like they need to, to keep other people interested or because that's what kind of society, you know, kind of pushes on you in a way. I don't think it's like in a malicious way, but like even in Gossip Girl, you know, you see these relationships and they're always so intense you know you have Serena and Nate who have this great chemistry and they're always you know getting up to whatever they're getting up to same with like Chuck and Blair and you know those seem like the big like loves of the show you don't really see anyone just not doing that kind of stuff and you see it in movies and you see it in tv all the time that sex plays a big part in relationship it, I don't think it's a really healthy thing to portray you know it, it but it's hard to it's hard to unlearn it and also remove it from media because it's an easy way to kind of show that two characters are first of all interested in each other secondly it's a good way to show that they are intimate on that kind of level in a way that is kind of you know quick and also doesn't take a lot of like building up you know you can have those scenes that just kind of add that kind of teach you about their relationship really fast. So it is hard to kind of take those scenes out of things and, you know, whatever. That's a whole tangent for another day. But I think Jenny's storyline, again, I think she's one of the most relatable people on this show, but because of how the writers, you know, wrote her and ultimately how her character ended up, I think that kind of gets overshadowed because she feels the pressure to tell the girls that, you know, she slept with Archer when she hadn't. And then she feels the pressure again to sleep with Damien and he kind of pressures her and Jenny stands up for herself and she's like, no, I don't want to, despite him then being horrible to her for it. It's really not a big deal. Well, actually, I mean, it is. Why don't we talk about this after? No, I don't, I don't want to do this. Where are you going? <sighs> If 
she still sets that boundary, which I think is so important for young people. Well, just anyone really, but I think specifically young people, especially people that watch these shows, that you do not have to do anything that you don't want to do ever. Especially not when it comes to relationships. If anyone tries to pressure you, then they are not the person that you should be, you know, spending your time with or putting your effort into. And I think that's kind of a hard lesson to learn when you're younger. Jenny not letting the pressure get to her, I think is a really good life lesson, but it's kind of overshadowed by the whole thing. And also she still feels that pressure that she can't tell anybody that it didn't happen. She tells every, she tells Serena that it did happen because she kind of feels like she has to put on that front of like, oh, it was fine, you know, it, it didn't matter, like you weren't right, I was right and you know, all that stuff. And it meant then that she couldn't talk to anyone about what had happened. And I think those storylines that Jenny gets put in would be more impactful if they truly resonated with her and her character and were brought up and she could talk to people about them. I think that would have been a much better way to kind of write those storylines in and set a better example. We get more of the Rufus power struggle, which really just gets kind of old um, because Rufus doesn't budge. He never budges. Whatever it is that Jenny's going through, usually it's as a result of something kind of bad that is happening in her life. In season one, it's because Belair is pressuring her and the minions and the pressures that she feels at school, and he doesn't try to sympathize with those. In season two, it is more focused on her determination and her drive for fashion, so that is a little bit different. Again, he still will not budge. Then in season three, it's because she has this guy in her life that is a bad influence on her. She's obviously lonely. She's obviously struggling with the whole, everything that's happening at school and all this stuff. She doesn't have a like fashion to put her effort into anymore. And again, Rufus just will not budge. He just goes straight to you're grounded, you're this, you're that, rather than like, what is actually happening with my like 16 year old daughter? Why is she acting this way? We also see her friendship with Eric get absolutely annihilated in this season, which up there with early days, Vanessa and Jenny is one of my favorite friendships. I think Eric and Jenny's friendship is one of the best things about the show. I think it is so sweet and so genuine in the first few seasons. And it was really sad to see it go so south. Her having that, you know, moment of just the power just took over her of being Queen Bee. You know, that I think is natural because it was something that she'd always wanted. So when she got it, it made sense that she could probably get a bit lost in it. And it kind of putting a strain on her friendship with Eric, I think makes complete sense. And, you know, he tries to rebel against her. And I think a lot of her kind of lashing out comes from when she feels threatened. And Eric and Jonathan purposefully tried to make her look weak to the minions. And that is like her whole thing. She can't, she can't handle it. And so she act, like lashed out against them. Had they then resolved that, I think it would have been fine or had it been, again been handled differently. I don't mind that her and Eric had a rift in their friendship, but I don't like how it was written and I don't like how it was handled and how ultimately it was left. She also appears really desperate for Nate in this season, which I don't think Jenny would be. Um, she obviously liked him in season one, had a crush on him and almost got him. <laughs> Almost, she was so close. And then, you know, you see that crush kind of resurface in season three, which obviously I love because I love Jenny and Nate together. It's in a weird way. She acts really desperate for him to like her when he does like her. He's shown time again that he is willing to show up for her, but she tries so desperately to break up him and Serena to the point where she goes to Chuck for advice on how to do it. And she does these really kind of shady tactics to try and put a wedge between them. And she just becomes... Yeah, so just incredibly desperate for him to love her that it just felt really out of character to me. I don't know, is that just me? Another kind of sweet friendship that doesn't really get a mention very much is Jenny and Serena. They don't interact so much after Serena and Dan break up, but in the first season, I think Serena is really sweet with her and that was a really sweet bond. And the way that she tried to talk to Jenny about Damien and about having sex for the first time and everything like that, again, I thought was a really nice moment. So I think the fact that it ends up with 
Serena, like, hating her guts is really harsh. Then with her fashion stuff, we get, like, hardly any focus on it at all. She manages to get her job back with Eleanor, which I loved. I was like, fabulous. This is great. Because when she was working at Eleanor's and there was that whole fashion drama storyline, I was like, this is good shit. This is great. So I thought her being able to work with Eleanor again, getting more kind of the Jenny that we knew before back, I was really excited about that. I thought that was a really good turn. But again, nothing comes of it. It wasn't so that Jenny could get back that determination for fashion and that strong, powerful businesswoman pursuing her dreams. It wasn't to get that character arc back. It was purely to just reintroduce Agnes for then something awful to happen to Jenny again. I think what happens, what goes down with Agnes in season three is one of the worst things on this show. For me, I think it's probably tied with the ho like the hotel. No, you know what? I think it's the worst thing that happens on this show. The thing that happens with Blair and the hotel is really awful because of the level of betrayal from Chuck and someone that she loved. But ultimately, she obviously doesn't sleep with Jack. I genuinely think, I do, I genuinely feel like this is the worst thing that happens on this show. And yet, nobody really talks about it that much. So Jenny goes to work for Eleanor again, and she runs into Agnes. And this is just after the whole Damien thing has happened, right? So not only has she just been like kind of pressured into having sex and had to set that boundary and make that kind of like hard decision to break off that relationship, even though she was really into him, even though he was obviously treating her like badly. She's also had this big kind of like blow up with Rufus as well because of that whole situation and the drugs. She's finally kind of in a good place with Rufus, in a good place like where she's trying to turn her life around. She wants to get back into fashion and again, they just will not let her. They just will not let her. And Agnes decides that she like wants revenge and she drugs Jenny, literally drugs her, puts her into a cab, takes her to some dodgy bar and leaves her to be assaulted. Like that is her intention. Like that is fully her intention is for some sleazy older guy because remember she's in a bar so these guys have got to be at least like 21 or older and she's 16 or maybe she's 17 actually because now we're in season three leave her in this bar drug she cannot walk she cannot do anything for herself she is literally defenseless to be assaulted by an older man is that not the most twisted like fucked up thing you've ever heard that is the most fucked up thing that happens in this show i think like i can't think of everything bad that happens right now because there's a lot of stuff that goes down but this is genuinely awful. It is awful. And it is over in like two episodes. Like Nate knows about it and Serene knows because Nate told her. But Jenny does not tell anyone else about this. And luckily Nate obviously like comes and saves her. Who thought of this shit? Like it is actually horrific. And she goes through so much in this show. And I feel like nobody, people can be so harsh about her and like hate her character i see a lot of jenny hate online like on tiktok comments and things like that but she honestly goes through so much and this is i think the worst thing that happens on this show and it happens to jenny and we have this whole feud with her and serena because of how jenny got in the like between serena and nate which i get is obviously annoying but serena is ultimately the one that ruined her relationship with nate not jenny jenny obviously you know found the flame she stirred the pot we'll give her that of course she did but Serena is ultimately the one that ruined that relationship by lying, by sneaking around behind Nate's back, by not telling him what was going on in her life. Because of that, he started to not trust her and whatever, and then they ultimately break up. But I think Serena takes all of that out on Jenny, and she is so cruel to her. And they have that scene where they're just constantly bickering about stuff. Serena is constantly taking jabs at her. Jenny, granted, is doing the same thing. Jenny is a teenager. And like, I get that obviously, like at this point, Serena's like 19, I think, and Jenny's 17. And it's kind of like, why pick a fight with a child? Why pick a fight with a teenager? The things that Jenny does is like petty and stuff, but then the things that Serena does are equally as petty. So we're getting towards the end of season three. And this is where like, you'd think stuff could get any worse. I guess it doesn't get worse than what Agnes does to her, but it just piles on towards the end of season three. For three years, you tried to worm your way into our world, but you will never be a part of it, no matter what you do. You, Jenny, no one loves you, except your daddy. And after what you pulled yesterday, who knows if that's even true anymore. In the scene where Blair goes to Jenny and tells her that nobody loves her, what the fuck? 
That is so brutal. Because the only reason she does that is because Jenny is the one who posts the picture of Serena and Dan together, okay? Right? So the situation is that Serena sleeps in Dan's bed because she's all pissed at Nate because Nate doesn't like William or called the cops on her dad or whatever, right? So she goes with Dan and is like, spends the night with him. That is on her. There should not have been anything for Jenny to take a picture of, okay? You do it in the loft in broad daylight, okay? And Jenny comes in. She obviously has his crush on Nate. Should she have done it? No. But every single person in this show, bar Nate, because we get told that he's never posted a tip, post tips to Gossip Girl. They do it all the time to get revenge on each other, to piss each other off, to whatever it is. They do that shit all the time. And Jenny does it. And suddenly it is like, she's the world's biggest villain. She is like out of control, like, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, no, she's just a teenager on the Upper East Side. She posts this picture of Serena and Dan, which ultimately leads to Nate seeing it and him being pissed and Vanessa seeing it and whatever. There shouldn't have been anything to see. There shouldn't have been. There shouldn't have been anything to see. Yes, it was shady of Jenny to take the picture and to post it, but you were the one that was sleeping with, sleeping with, in the same bed as Dan, who was not your boyfriend at the time. And they also kissed, like, which is worse. They kissed. Jenny didn't post that they kissed or anything like that. She obviously just posted the picture. And somehow, once again, she comes out as the one that's like out of control and trying to ruin everyone's life. And Blair goes to her after she finds out about this and literally tears her a new one like on another level and i love blair and blair is like one of my favorite characters maybe my favorite character in the whole show she's great she's amazing she's like there will never be another tv character like her but this felt so unnecessarily cruel she tells her that nobody loves her like i can't remember exactly what she says in the scene but it is so heartbreaking how could you tell this to like a 17 year old girl I just can't even imagine. Like, she's so cruel to her. It is crazy. And every single person in her life abandons her. Eric, Serena, Rufus, Lily, Dan, Vanessa, Nate. Absolutely everybody that she's ever cared about turns her back on her. When ultimately, she is just going through stuff. I don't think anything that she does in this show is any worse than what other people do to each other. But everyone is so incredibly harsh with her. And lastly, for season three, obviously, we have that she sleeps with Chuck and gets banished by Blair, which, oh my God, the issues I have with this storyline. Firstly, the fact that she, Damien, was pressuring her to sleep with her was like, no, I want my first time to like be with someone special. She like, I want it to be like, I don't want it to just be a like quickie before I go to school, you know? It obviously meant a lot to her. So for her to then end up losing it, I don't know, I don't like, I think I said this before, but like I've said this a few times, I think, but I don't like the whole losing your virginity thing. I think it's a ridiculous concept. So when she has sex for the first time, right? That it is with Chuck. It is with a guy that she did not love. It's with a guy that obviously in the pilot, when we take the pilot into account, literally tried to assault her i just think it's so sad it all stems from how lonely she is and how she feels like she doesn't have anybody else and she went there looking for nate and chuck was there and it happened and i just think it is so incredibly sad for this to be like how it turns out and this is kind of her last big storyline she's got a like storyline in season four but this is kind of her last like big storyline. And I just think it's so sad that it turned out this way. You can tell how much she regrets it afterwards. And when she's like crying in the hospital and Eric finds her. And at this point, her and Eric aren't friends. Dan doesn't <laughs> like think she's out of control. Serena says to Rufus, how many more problems is Jenny going to create before you realize that she's the problem? And it's like, how is she the problem? I got a comment on one of my Gossip Girl videos saying that I'm like too much of a Jenny apologist, which could be true because I do love Taylor Momsen. But like, I'm also interested to know, please let me know in the comments what you think. Are you in the boat of like, no, Jenny got what she deserved. Like she is an irritating character. Cause I really want to know that side of things. Like I want to know why people don't like her. I think she's so unfairly treated in this show the things that happened to her 
are awful. Some of the things that happen to Jenny in this show are absolutely traumatic and nobody ever checks in on her. Nobody ever makes sure she's okay. Everyone is always mad at her. And then she's banished by Blair. And Blair takes Chuck back, not even that much longer after this. I don't know how many episodes it is exactly, maybe like 10 or something. But Jenny is the one that is exiled. And obviously it was like a whole thing because their character was to leave and whatever. But the fact that she's literally just banished. The Chuck and Jenny situation for me is definitely a equal parts leaning more towards Chuck fault. Like here, um, I don't think it's Jenny's fault completely. But I also don't think it's Chuck's fault completely. I think people could be, I don't know, maybe a little too harsh about that. I mean, you know, people are very harsh on Chuck anyway, which I totally get and I think is completely justified. Uh, but in this situation, I think he thought the Blair didn't love him anymore. That was like the love of his life that he had lost. Should he have slept with Jenny? Absolutely not. She was obviously so upset and he was so upset. And I think it was just both of them being sad and just not wanting to feel like that. I'm not saying it was like exactly like it was all Chuck's fault and it wasn't Jenny's fault at all. But I think the fact that she was the one that was banished and was treated so harshly by everyone afterwards rather than Chuck. Obviously, Blair is mad at Chuck and dumps him, but like ultimately forgives him. Rufus is the only one that really like gives Chuck a run for his money for a little bit afterwards. Like Lily forgives him straight away. I don't even think Nate mentions it one time. I don't even think Nate mentions it one time, but Jenny is the one that gets banished and is out of control and, you know, needs to leave and go and live in Hudson because she's ruining everyone's life around her. And I just don't, I just don't think that's the case. Again, I think the Blair passing the queen mantle down to Jenny, I think that was a really good storyline idea. I think it had a lot of potential and that, and it going to her head and all that stuff, I think was really good but I just think it was mishandled again. They don't complete that arc. Kind of realizing the error of her ways or whatever it is, she just stays like that. <laughs> like it just goes to her head, this whole queen bee thing, the drug thing and all this stuff, like it, and it, she just stays that way. And then awful things just continue to happen to her. <laughs> that is her whole story for season three. I think Serena treats her absolutely awfully and no one really like seems to call her out for it because they kind of portray it that Serena is the one in the right and Jenny is the one in the wrong. Even down to just when Serena moves back in, she wants to take Jenny's room from her. It's like, no, <laughs> why would you do that? Why, just to spite her, be like, I'm better than you. At every turn, she, you know, takes a swipe at Jenny. And I just feel like it's unnecessary because ultimately she was the one that destroyed her relationship with Nate, not Jenny. And there's this whole thing about a cotillion that um, she used to be taken down a peg and all this stuff, um, which, quite frankly, coming from Eric, that's fine. Do you know what I mean? Coming from Eric, if he feels that way, you know, she does treat him quite badly. So if he feels like she needs a bit of a reality check or, you know, needs to be old Jenny again, that's fine. But for Blair, for Blair and Serena and like specifically Blair to be like, yep, yeah, Jenny needs to be taken down a peg. Like, what's she doing? When Blair was Queen Bee, she was horrendous. And Jenny is literally just following in those footsteps. She's no worse than Blair. And yet, she's the one that, again, is out of control, is doing the absolute most. And it's like, no, she's not. She's literally just doing what you guys do. Jenny at Cotillion was unreal, okay? Her at Cotillion was absolutely iconic. She ate every single one of those girls up. That is the best Cotillion ever. She, like, that was one of those episodes where I truly felt like Jenny just got to shine because she outsmarted them. And I was happy for her, okay? I was happy for her. They, you know, sent her up there, like, by herself without her escort, you know, to try and take her down. And then she brings out Nate Archibald. Nate Archibald is her escort. Shut up right now absolutely iconic and then also the way that she the fact that she wore a black dress to cotillion like i just love jenny i just love her she had her own individual style there is i you might not like her personality but you cannot deny that that girl served a look on that show she just oh my god she looks so great and i just loved how individual she was she was more towards how i dressed you know when I was watching the show and the kind of style that I was into and 
I just absolutely loved her and I resonated with her so much. And I thought she was great. And when she wore that black dress to Cotillion, she looked insane. She looked gorgeous. She looked so different from like all the other kind of like formal looks that we'd seen. And I just absolutely loved it. I loved it. So now we're getting into Jenny's final season, which is season four. And just when you thought, because I feel like for me, the Jenny storylines and the writing, it was in the trenches in season three. It gets even worse in season four. As we leave season three with Jenny leaving to go and live in Hudson. And while that's not how I would have had Jenny leave the show, because I think she deserved it better than that, it's fine. I made my peace with it. But then to bring her back in season four, just to destroy her character even more. Are you guys for real? So firstly, she returns just to purely be collateral damage in Chuck and Blair's war. She comes back to New York for an interview for Parsons, which is a fashion school. So we're back on Fashion Jenny, where she is her best. But Chuck, it's all set up by Chuck to piss off Blair. Blair then goes and sabotages her dresses, literally writes whore on them. Like, are you serious? Are you, be for real? Like, actually be for real. The slut shaming from Blair on Jenny for sleeping with Chuck is next level. It is next level. And it is just so awful. It is, that is one of the most awful things that Blair does, honestly. I can't believe it. And then this whole war is happening and poor Jenny's like just stuck in the middle of it. So then she posts it. She's like, Blair's obviously, she finds out that Blair hasn't told anyone about Jenny and Chuck because obviously she's embarrassed. So she's like, the one outs, okay? You have banished me. You have ruined my interview, slut shamed me. I can't come back to New York to visit my family. Okay, the one little ounce of power that I have left is being able to tell what happened. Being able to post on Gossip Girl that I slept with Chuck. That is all she did. She just told what happened to her. And again, again, she's the villain. And Blair is pissed at her for telling. Dan is pissed at her. He's like, you know, I thought you were changing Jen. Like, you've only been back a day and look what you've done. And it's like, this happened to Jenny. Lest we forget, okay? This happened to her. If she wants to share it, she can fucking share it. Who cares? Like, she has been banished, shamed by all these people. You know, such awful stuff happens to her. And then she just takes a little back. She just fights back just a little. And instantly, again, everyone is on her case about it. Then, at the end of that episode, she gets a somewhat good send-off, which I actually appreciated because her and Dan have a sweet moment, which I think was nice to see because their relationship again gets kind of ruined. I didn't mention this because I forgot that it happened until just now, but when Jenny goes to this Brooklyn party thing with Nate, when she's all like desperate for Nate and trying to sabotage the whole thing, she bumps into Dan there. And the second that they see each other, they both immediately go to blackmail. He's like, oh, does Dan know you're here? And she's like, oh, does Vanessa know you're here with this girl? I think it's such a shame because in the early seasons, well, in season one and two kind of, I loved Dan and Jenny. I thought their sibling relationship was so sweet and the way they looked out for each other. And I thought, I just love the whole Humphrey clan and it just gets utterly destroyed. So anyway, she gets that somewhat, you know, good send off and then it is ruined. Dan puts her in the cab. She drives and she goes, you know, that she's got her interview, you know, with Parsons. So she could be going to fashion school. Great. Love that for Jenny. She's had her moment to like air out what happened to her she says to chuck and blair she's like you guys used to be a power couple and she gets that moment of being the bigger person and like saying to them i'm not going to stoop to your level i don't want to i'm better than that or at least i want to be better than that in order to beat you i have to become you and i'm better than that at least i want to be and that was so good that was actual good character development from jenny i wish that it hadn't led up to it in the way that it did but we got that moment and it was good and then they take that and they ruin it <laughs> by bringing her back like two episodes later, okay? To scheme and everything all over again. She has this big speech about how she wants to be better than them. And then she comes back and she stoops to their level again. The Juliet storyline. Juliet is out to sabotage Serena. Vanessa is now on a rampage against Serena. So she's brought in Jenny. And Jenny agrees to it because she wants to kind of avenge Vanessa basically and help her. Firstly, I think it's a little bit ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous that Vanessa even asked her because she knew what she had gone through and what she, you know, had to deal with on the Upper East Side and still asked her to come back. Also, 
I don't think that Jenny would just come back to scheme like just for fun like just for Vanessa like seriously it literally diminishes all that character development that she had because she just immediately jumps on the chance to get a bit of revenge it, it was just very weird then when she does do all this she's the only one because obviously this kind of like this whole thing they just kind of wanted to make Serena feel like she didn't have anybody right just a bit of a little cheeky bit of revenge Julia's the one that takes it too far and drugs her and everything but Jenny and Vanessa don't know that Juliet was the one that drugged Serena. They think Serena did that to herself, right? And Jenny is the only one that feels guilty. Jenny is the only one that says, guys, this was bad. Like, even if Serena had a drug problem or whatever, like, we need to tell her what we did and we need to tell her that we're sorry that we hurt her. And Vanessa does not. Vanessa does not. Like, obviously, Juliet doesn't. And... Jenny is the only one that actually feels an ounce of remorse and then wants to come clean and Vanessa throws her under the bus. Vanessa is like, it was all Jenny. Are you shitting me? It's not our fault. Maybe, but we still need to tell her what we did and tell her that we're sorry. Sorry. I had to tell him what you did to Serena. What I did. She's like, it was all Jenny. So then Rufus is pissed at her and Jenny explains like it wasn't just me it was Vanessa and it was Juliet but at that point Rufus doesn't care Rufus is like I'm not their dad I'm your dad and takes it all out on her again and is like yeah you shouldn't have come back you need to stay away like all this stuff like literally just throws her to the side is like you need to like go you need to leave then dad is pissed because she was involved in everyone now knows that she was involved in this she's the only one that shows an ounce of remorse and yet is the one that gets scolded the absolute most for it. And then that's it. Rufus banishes her back to Hudson and we don't see her again until the series finale. She's in it right at the, right at the very end for like one scene. She had a nice send off. It, granted it wasn't the send off I would have picked for her, but then they come back, they ruin her character even more. And then her final scene is with Blair and her basically just being like, yeah, no, I shouldn't have come back. I'm gonna go. Character down the toilet. I just, I can't believe it. I just, I don't understand why they brought her character back to bury her even further than she already was. Like if they had just left it at her, leaving Grand Central Station, big family hug with Dan, Rufus, Lily, Eric, that would have been fine for me. They didn't need to bring her back. And then when they did bring her back, okay, but then she gets her nice send off. She gets her moment to be the better person. Leave it alone. Why did you have to bring her back to just bury her even more? She's trying to move on and she gets pulled back in and again, made the villain again. And in the process, it ruined her relationship with Vanessa forever. Because even after all that, Dan was mad at her, Rufus, Serena, she still had Vanessa. Granted, we didn't really see her that much or like she might not have even been in the show at that point. I'm not sure. She hadn't had beef with Vanessa since the whole Nate thing in season two. So she still had Vanessa. Obviously enough for Vanessa to ask her for help in season four right but now she doesn't have Vanessa either that sweet sister bond that they had in the first season is ruined forever because we don't see Vanessa again you know after Vanessa gets her villain arc which is another thing like in my Vanessa deep dive we're going to talk all about how she became the villain of this show for absolutely no reason Vanessa doesn't make up with anybody this sister bond that she had with Jenny is now broken forever just because she wanted to save herself and her own reputation she threw Jenny under the bus and ruin their friendship forever. I wanted to see what people thought about Jenny because I feel like I see a lot of hate for her online um, and a lot of Jenny slander in the comments of videos and TikToks and Reddit and things like that. So I asked on Reddit, I was like, you know, did a poll and do you like Jenny? My options were yes, no, and like sometimes, you know, certain storylines, whatever. It was pretty evenly split actually across the three. There are a lot of votes for no. There are also a lot of votes for yes. Um, there wasn't really much in it between yes and no. So that kind of confirmed what I thought that she's a very like polarizing character. And then the one that got the most votes was, you know, like sometimes certain seasons of things. And I think that's interesting because they had such a good character with her. And I feel like that kind of shows that. Had a really good character with her and she was a really enjoyable character. And then they kind of had seasons where she just wasn't written as well. And I think people kind of went off of her character, which is a shame because I think she had the potential. And I think in some ways she is still one of the best characters on the show. I think that can be the case sometimes as well, is that rather than looking at Jenny's character um, and the good things about her character, 
it's easy to look at how her character impacted other storylines and then Serena and Nate or Chuck and Blair that kind of thing and then like how you know she tipped off William so that he could like get away yes tipping off William was bad but when you look at it she did it because she wanted her family back and because she was struggling so much on the upper east side but no one ever asked her about that everyone always just jumped straight to why did you do that awful thing like you're the worst like why do you always ruin everything you know Eric was like oh if you don't want to be here you don't have to be here and it's just like it's not because she doesn't love Eric or Lily or whatever but in this toxic world there's this pressure and it turns her into a worse person and she wants to better herself and she just wants to be oh my god my voice sounds so weird because of like this bloody surgery um i don't know if i said but i had like really minor no surgery like a week ago so if my voice sounds really weird that is why and i feel like it's getting worse as i'm like talking for longer but yeah she just wanted to be she just wanted to go back to how things were in season one when she was like, you know, just sweet, innocent Jenny before any of this had happened, like just with Rufus and with Dan and they all were the Humphrey clan. And those are such sweet scenes. So I understand why she wants to go back to that because I love those early season, um, like Humphrey scenes. And I think they did change. The whole dynamic changed once Rufus got with Lily and they moved in and all that stuff. It's kind of like a sort of summary type thing. Let's just have a little, let, let's, I mean, I've been having a rant this whole video, but let's kind of go more like point by point, a bit more concise. Firstly, I feel like they ruined every meaningful connection that Jenny ever had. Obviously you have Eleanor and Agnes and like those kind of more like flimsy type ones or whatever. But the truly meaningful connections that she had, Rufus, Dan, Vanessa, Sabrina, and Eric. And then I guess Lily and Nate sort of to a certain point, but not so much as the other ones because Serena and her had a really sweet little friendship in the beginning. They didn't have so many seats together, but they had quite a few. Her like sister bond that she had with Vanessa, her best friend bond that she had with Eric, the really sweet bond she had with Dan and her dad and all of those get absolutely ruined and not rectified. You know, you see obviously in series six finale that everyone's fine with her and you know everything's all good but i just think it's a shame that we didn't get to actually see that secondly they ruined the things that gave her potential the things that i really loved about her the things that made her different from the other characters her love and talent for fashion in a way that was just more creative obviously you have flair that styles things and kind of designs and stuff towards the end of the show but Jenny was in there. She was designing, she was making dresses, she was wearing them, making dresses for other people. Like her drive to chase her dreams so young. I loved it. The Gorilla Fashion Show is one of my favorite episodes. Absolutely adore it. Yeah, her drive and determination, it gets absolutely stomped out by Rufus. When she was doing her fashion stuff in season two, granted it wasn't going exactly to plan because of whole Agnes thing, but if Rufus had been on board, Jenny was absolutely thriving in that storyline. She had the cute guy that she wanted. She was doing the things she wanted to do, making things happen. She had her best friendship with Eric as well, with Vanessa. Everything was good. When Rufus takes that away from her, not only damaged her relationship with him, but then also she's forced back into that school again. He forces her to go back to Constance where she was clearly struggling before. And then she's gone back and she's become Queen Bee. And it has ruined the rest of her, you know, kind of time in Gossip Girl. And third, you know, some of the worst things that happen in this show happen to Jenny. And I think she just doesn't deserve the hate that she gets. And also some of the storylines they wrote for her, it's like, why would you do this to her? Ultimately, with most of them, nothing really comes of them. They're just awful to watch and that happened to her. They're not conversations she's able to have with people in the future or that better her character or anything even remotely close to that. Attacked by Chuck at 14 years old, having the first time that she ever has sex to be with that guy. Absolutely everyone turns their back on her in a way that does not happen to anybody else in the show aside from maybe Vanessa. They then brought her character back just to ruin her character even more. And the characters in this show treat her terribly they treat her awfully whether it's directly like to her or as collateral damage in their own storyline whatever they're getting on with some of the stories we could have seen or the character arts we could have gotten for her was her you know succeeding in fashion which she does ultimately because we see in the season six finale she i think 
it's like implied that she designed Serena's wedding dress. And she's holding a bag that says J for Waldorf. So we know that she becomes a designer for Waldorf designs, which is fine. Like that's kind of like a cute nod, but also like I would have liked to have seen Jay Humphrey designs on the bag instead. Like I don't really know why she needed to work with Blair, but at least that means they kind of, you know, came to a amicable agreement or whatever. They became friends again. And Jenny is there at the wedding. So she's obviously still friends with Eric as we find out through the seasons. Whenever they talk about Jenny, she's usually in London with Eric. But I think it would have been nice to see her like to actually see her in the show succeed with fashion. Overcoming the toxicity of the Upper East Side and not being like shunned for being different than the Serena and Blair type that we usually see. I think they had a great character in Jenny that they truly ruined. I still love her and I, she's still one of my favorite characters. Ultimately, all she ever wanted was to design fashion. That was all she ever wanted, that and to just be loved, I think. She just wanted to fit in, she wanted to be loved and she wanted to succeed in fashion. And she ends up with nothing. Obviously, yes, in season six, she like everything ends up fine for her. But as we actually leave her as a character and what we get to see of her, she ends up with none of that. She didn't let Eleanor or Blair, for that matter, walk all over her. She was a loyal friend, sister, and a good person until they changed her character for the worse. I don't think there's anything wrong with Jenny growing up and losing her way and all that stuff, but I think ultimately she deserved to be happy. And the way that they wrote her and the way that the storylines they gave her, it was just awful thing after awful thing that happens to her. And people just continue to treat her terribly. Like the way that they treat her is it justified. The things that happened to her, no one ever looks out for her. She always somehow ends up being the villain. And you can say that everything works out for her in the end, and I agree with that. But I just wish we could have actually seen it on screen rather than it all happening off screen. And obviously, Taylor Momsen wanted to leave, which is absolutely fine. You know, she decided that obviously acting wasn't her passion, that music was. And I love The Pretty Reckless. She is insanely talented, so I totally get it. She did the best thing for her. But even with that, I think in the three seasons that we did get Jenny for, they just could have done so much more with her. I think they could have done some really like cool stuff with her. And there is so much about her character and her storylines that I would change. Um, maybe I'll do like a video on how I would have ended Gossip Girl or how I would have, you know, wanted things to go because it would have been quite different to what we got in the end. But yeah, that is it for today's video. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me or do you not agree with me? I'm really interested to see. I always like to talk about characters that are a bit more, you know, that not everybody loves or everybody hates and there's a bit more nuance to it. I think that's really fun to hear people's opinions. There is more Gossip Girl Week videos coming up. So I'm really excited for you guys to see those. I will link my Patreon below if you would like to support the channel. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, and I also have a second channel. I have a few podcasts. I have all kinds of stuff. So you can see all of that in the description below. That is it for today's video. I will see you guys tomorrow for day three of Gossip Girl Week. And yeah, I'll see you then. Bye.